jeepers, creepers, where you get those papers? All those weepers, how they hypnotize. Where did you get those eyes? Where did you get those eyes? Hello and welcome to a new series, Archaeologist's Eye. Uh, in this series, um, I'm going to be posting uh, a puzzle every now and then, or a query, a question, a visual um, conundrum for you guys to try and have a think about and to try and solve, try and think, essentially, like an archaeologist. Now, um, I'll explain that in a moment, but this series actually has been inspired by a question of doom that I received a couple of days ago. Um, the person who sent the question was asking, essentially, do archaeologists ever really switch off? Um, now, obviously, archaeologists, for the most part, love their downtime. You know, often we love going to the pub, we love socialising, reading, often we have very geeky hobbies, this kind of thing. Um, but I think what they were getting at was whether or not the skills which we develop in, for our job uh, or for our, our academic pursuits, um, whether or not those skills are easily switched off. For example, making observations about a building or a landscape and trying to piece together its history. Can you just turn that off when you're in your day-to-day -day life? Now, this is actually uh, a very interesting question, because in my experience, the answer is no. Um, I'm forever making observations and guessing and trying to piece together the history of something based on what's in front of me, the, the evidence which is there. I don't go out digging in my downtime, as it were. I don't go out digging uh, of an evening and this kind of thing. Um, but I certainly can't, cannot help but, but look at something and think, oh, I wonder if that means that. Um, and actually, Rosemary Cramp touched on this in her interview uh, in the Meet the Archaeologist that we did recently. She mentioned that actually good observational skills, in her opinion, are, are key to being a good archaeologist, certainly a good field archaeologist. Um, and that's why I thought, well, actually, this is interesting enough. Uh, an interesting enough question that it, I, th I think it actually deserves more than just an answer. I think it actually deserves a whole new series. So what I'm going to do from time to time is post um, a query, post a visual conundrum for you, a, a short video essentially about an observation that I've made. And uh, then, a few days later, uh, I'll post what the answer is to that query. So in this series, in this playlist, what you'll get are question, answer, question, answer. But the question will be an opportunity for you to think about something and try and employ the skills of an archaeologist. Try and think, um, I suppose, fourth dimensionally, as um, Emmett Brown would say in, uh, in Back to the Future. Try and think about what something was like through time, not just um, what it, where it is physically now. And the, the, the clues will be there for you to try and piece together. Now, in some instances, such as today's conundrum, I'll have to go away and confirm whether or not my thoughts are actually right, but I won't present you with my thoughts in the question. What I'll do is I'll just present the scenario so I'm not biasing uh, your thoughts. And hopefully this could be a really interesting opportunity for you guys to get into the, the mindset of an archeologist. And also, if nothing else, actually, it should be quite good fun. So, today's conundrum, what is today's conundrum? Well, today's conundrum is actually based on uh, the street just over there, uh, the street one along from the street that I live on in Wall's End. Most mornings when I'm walking our dog, Indy, we find ourselves going onto the street adjacent to ours, Coronation Street. Now, Coronation Street is very similar to all the other streets in this part of Wall's End. There are houses from the late Victorian and early 20th century period. Because of this, there are many interesting original features, such as old doors. Where alterations have been made, they're usually fairly easy to spot. But Coronation is different to all the other streets hereabout. You see, at one point, the houses completely change. Suddenly, the roof line alters. Bay windows are visible. These are post-Second World War dwellings. Interestingly, however, this style does not continue all the way along the road. At the end of the road, once again, we're back with Victorian or early 20th century architecture. In other words, in the middle of the street, there's a section which is post-Second World War, which is not original. Around the back of the houses, the contrast is also obvious. Yet when we look down, there is a consistent and constant cobbled surface, now tarmacked over, but the whole of this back lane 
is original. In other words, even though there are new houses in the middle, the lane has always been there. If we take a look at Google Maps, the section which I'm talking about would be here. The houses are distinct. The roof line is different. Even the depth of the houses are different. Why? This is the mystery of Coronation Street. So there you have it. What is happening on Coronation Street? Why, at number 58, uh, onwards, up, up until a certain point on the street, are the houses so different? Why are they of uh, essentially a post-Second World War design? Um, at both ends of the street you have those, uh, those early 20th century, if not Victorian style houses, but why in the middle is it so different? We've seen that the lane out back is consistently um, early 20th century, if not Victorian, cobbled essentially, but now tarmacked over, all the way along. So in the past it seems there probably were houses there, they've just changed. Why? Uh, this is something for you guys to think about. The evidence is all there. I think I know what happened, but I'm going to go away and confirm it, and hopefully next week I'll present the answer. Um, and uh, and we'll, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys make of this. Comments below. What do you think is the reason for the strangeness of the houses on Coronation Street? Or more to the point, sorry, the different design of that, that little block of houses on Coronation Street. There you go. I look forward to reading them. Until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.